Hi, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, I hope you uh, were able to take an opportunity to um, to network with uh, other members and, and also talk to our, um, our sponsors. We, we have a lot going on from, from this point here on the industry stage. Our theme uh, for this track is uh, connecting customers and partners. And so we have uh, a series of four speakers who are going to talk to different aspects of that. I'm, I'm very pleased to be uh, starting off with Hussein um, Abu Mgyayi, who is going to uh, talk about uh, open data in the API economy and uh, really looking forward to, uh, sh to learning how we can have, um, how we can address uh, a social agenda with, uh, with data and, uh, and, and through openness, which uh, of course APIs facilitate. So welcome, uh, Sainabu. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very happy to have been invited to speak at this conference and talk about a topic that is so close to my heart. So yeah, um, the title of uh, this call is Open Data in the API Economy and its Impact on Global Society. Um, I will talk about the value of data, its connection with uh, the growth of the API economy. I'll also go over how collaboration, transparency, and open source models have opened the doors to many profitable business opportunities before. And I'll also go over the main point, which is basically that um, by creating new standards on transparency and democratizing access to information, we can create profitable business opportunities that are also sustainable and that reduce inequalities. All right, so uh, first of all, I'm really happy to meet you all. My name is Sena Bunyai. Um, I go by she and her. Um, I'm a developer in an AI company called Zama, which is a training data provider. I'm also the Montreal City League for an organization called Women AI that uh, aims to make uh, the AI ecosystem more inclusive and um, accessible. I'm also um, a data science mentor for uh, great learning and a serial volunteers for organizations like the Montreal Global Shapers or Fulab, one of Montreal's first hacker space. All right, so enough about me. And what is Sama? As I mentioned earlier, Sama is a training data provider. They, of, they offer high quality training data and, some of, and they are recognized by some of the, of the world leaders in AI. With their machine learning assisted uh, annotation system, they're able to provide the same high quality data at a fraction of the time it would usually take. They're also the only data labeling company that has a social mission of reducing poverty, empowering women, and mitigating climate change. By providing dignified digital work and living wages, they're well, providing economic opportunities to over 53 thousand people ever since they started in 2008. They also have currently 12,000 workers and 36,000 dependents. As a high growth um, AI company trusted by industry experts, Sama has proved that you don't have to compromise between profit and having a positive social impact. In this talk, I'll tell you more about um, collaborative business models that are also profitable and how AI and open data tie everything together. And yeah, my first question would probably be what? Why open data? So why exactly am I choosing to talk about open data? Since usually when people hear open data, they're thinking more about um, the private sector or government transparency and all. And I have to say that um, currently open data is being brought up more and more in the concept of, in the context, sorry, of the private sectors. Companies are either using a lot of uh, data from open data sources, or they are themselves creating open data sources to increase their user base of um, consumers or let them become familiar with the, their services. So the second reason why I'm talking about open data is also because data has a lot of value. So you've probably already heard of uh, that refrain that um, data is the new oil, which was coined back in 2017 in an article in, um, uh, I think, The Economist. And uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. 
Um, there's been a lot of advances in machine learning, computer visions, big data techniques, etc. And there, are, there's a big rate in growth, well, a big growth in uh, AI adoptions in various sectors like finance, the medical sector, agriculture, or education even. And um, in order to make use of these advances in technology, there is a huge need of high quality data. And just note that I said quality data, because um, I don't have to tell you about how um, poor quality data or biased data, even in high quantity, can lead to bad decision models, that, uh, decision um, business decisions that can be costly, or even worse, how they can reinforce some injustices or in inequality. So I should say that quality data has value and not just um, data in general. So yeah, um, data is at the center of the fourth industrial revolution. And one of the reasons why it's possible is thanks to the higher computing power that's available currently. Also open source libraries that make handling the data easier and um, make um, using well, training AI models much easier and at a lower cost um, of um, well, storing all of that data. And there is, of course, no APIs that are to thank for that um, um, growth in uh, adoption. So thanks to API, um, data is accessible at a higher volume and much quicker than usual because you don't have to worry about um, starting everything from scratch. You can basically save money on infrastructure that you do no longer need to build and basically just use an API provider in order to get whichever information you seek to get. And currently, um, Oops, forgot to change the slide, sorry. <laughs> um, with billions of requests sent daily, APIs play a crucial role in linking organizations and technologies in ecosystem. In fact, McKenzie even estimated a few years back or maybe last year that um, um, the global economic profit from enabling cross-sector collaboration, uh, cross collaboration to up to one trillion dollars, which is huge. And I feel like I don't even have to tell you this. You're all at the APID, so you know about the many business opportunities we can get from APIs and even open APIs as well, similarly to with open data. There are another way of attracting more customers and becoming known as a um, leaders in a specific field. All right, so this turn towards more open collaboration with API is not just unique to APIs or data and software. It's um, a global trend that is basically just everywhere. And I mean, when it comes to open source, you're already familiar with um, some open source projects like Swagger UI, which is a known um, service to um, present your API in a nice way and share it and stick to the principles of um, open API. There's also PyTorch, which is a library for um, uh, that was made by Facebook for deep learning. And yeah, so I mean, I don't need to go in details for that. Um, for open innovation, we have, for example, Mozilla or Moodle or just various hackathons, which are open innovation competitions. And those have been steadily on the rise for the past year that um, it's very common to hear about um, this concept. And yeah, the last one is um, open banking. I, I'm saying last one, there are many others. It's just the last one I want to bring up open banking because um, it is very, you, you will most likely hear a lot about open banking or open finance in the today and tomorrow. Uh, as I think I, there are many talks scheduled around that topic uh, in the API days. So yeah, whether it's with data, software, or just ideas, there are efforts to encourage collaboration and transparency. And that has actually led to some really great ideas like the one in the next slide. So lots of popular apps and services that we use right now are what we could call mashup apps. And they're basically just the results of the API economy. So the companies that I'm like uh, citing in the, in the slides have different um, roles because you have Google, for example, which provides open APIs and other similar services. You have Uber, Eat, Uber Eats, which for example, is built on top of Google Maps. Um, there's Twilio, um, 
Twilio, which I believe was uh, considered one of the pioneers in the API economy. And yeah, so even something as simple as LinkedIn, because they have a third party sign in uh, feature, which makes a platform more user friendly. So even something just like that is a uh, part of uh, this ecosystem. And all of these companies have very solid, profitable business models, and they've be they have benefited from the rise in transparency and this culture of collaboration that I'm going to go more in detail about. And yeah, so many of these organizations even try to give back to the community and not just like take. And sometimes it's just purely for public relations reasons, but some of them are actually trying to have a good positive impact. And basically, I just want to bring back the initial question and the initial goal of this meeting is how can this new collaboration culture create more concrete positive impact and not just um, financial gains that only benefit a few. And I believe that the key is to creating new standards of transparency. Nowadays, many businesses are very reluctant to become more transparent, and that's for many different reasons. Some are afraid of losing their competitive edge. Others are simply afraid of being held accountable for their actions. And on the bright side, that is slowly changing, and that is thanks to the raising awareness about sustainability, among other things. So, for example, practices like in, uh, responsible investing are becoming more popular and even to say that they are becoming a standard in the world of uh, investing. In short, it's just the practice of um, taking into account some, uh, some uh, ESG factors. So by ESG, I mean um, environment, uh, social and governance, um, basically taking that into account when they're doing investment uh, decisions. And we're still far from a general adoption of these practices, but uh, the trends are really clearly towards a rapid um, adoption of uh, responsible API practices. And that would mean essentially that um, it will pay to be transparent and work towards a social goal. And I'm not really just talking about uh, greenwashing or pinkwashing, I'm talking about actual concrete impact that will become the new <laughs> profitable, profitable uh, trend. So yeah, by marrying this uh, culture of collaboration with uh, the principles of uh, transparency, accessibility, and accountability, we can create gateways that facilitate social innovation and democratization of information. All right, um, I wanted to give uh, examples of uh, three mission-driven organizations that are, in my opinion, marrying those um, ideas well. The first one would be Sustainalytics, which is an ESG data service that integrates their ESG research and, um, well, that help uh, organizations integrate their ESG research and data directly into their systems and um, workflow through their APIs. There's also Frontiers, which is a, lead, a leading um, open access publisher and open science platform. And their mission is to make uh, science uh, more open. Uh, open. <laughs> They're getting millions of downloads of their scholarly articles. They have a really interesting uh, system to <clears throat> a peer review system. And yeah, the, the other company I wanted to cite was uh, CDP, which is a non-for-profit that is known as the gold standard for environmental reporting. And they have the richest and most comprehensive data set on corporate and city action in, um, uh, in relations to uh, carbon emissions. So yeah, these three different organizations, like they're, they're very different organizations, but I believe that they have a solid business model and a social mission. And also they're not exceptional. And by not exceptional, I, I, I mean, what they're doing is great, but in a sense, um, there are many different use cases that are possible. It is possible to basically have a solid business model and actually have a, still tie in with a social mission. Yeah. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little. <laughs> All right, so. I guess um, what I want to say is just that um, 
solutions that are sustainable and profitable are possible. If you want to look at an example, if we look into the agricultural sector, for example, it's not a secret that a lot of food is wasted on a regular basis. And ironically, it's in order to avoid losses sometimes, or sometimes it's because of some regulations. Um, <clears throat> and by being more transparent in the, this specific case, um, they, they could be opening the door to innovative solutions or innovative ways to make sure that the food that would otherwise go to waste has a use and actually is given to people who actually need it. When we live in a world where a lot of people are lacking specific uh, resources like food, it doesn't really make sense to be regularly throwing food away and knowing that a big portion of the food you're producing goes to waste. So that is an example when it, for the, the agricultural sector, but it, that's relevant in any other sector where we see waste or bad resource management. And from looking at the examples of the other organizations that are collaborating together or being more open, we see that openness leads to collaboration and innovation and eventually, you know, profit. So by creating doorways um, for, for collaboration, uh, by being transparent, we can tackle issues like product or energy waste. Um, we can also we could optimize resource allocation and that could become a reality um, through that. So not only are you broadening your potential client uh, base, by simply providing resources that others can use, whether it's data or uh, something else, you are keeping up, you are also keeping up with the trends of responsible invest, uh, investing practices by basically being more transparent and showing willingness to actually <clears throat> uh, create positive impact. And essentially you are empowering communities. So I believe, um, yeah, that uh, transparency accessibility and just democratizing access to information could be the key to um, new business ideas that are profitable, not just for the organization itself, but also for um, the society in large. We already know that data has value. Um, as long as you get access to that data and open the open data principles would facilitate that, you can use the tools available um, and open the open source tool available and all of your ideas to basically tackle <clears throat> global issues um, in your own way. So yeah, um, that's basically it for my presentation. I've been a little bit long, but uh, yeah, I'd be really happy to, you feel free to reach out to me and um, sorry, I'd be really happy to go over this with you. All right. Sainabu, uh, thanks very much for that uh, great presentation. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, can you go back to one slide? I think you showed um, the social innovation uh, data sources from Sustainalytics, uh, Frontiers, and CDP, because mm -hmm. you know we, we've got a lot of API enthusiasts uh, yeah. in, in our audience, and they'd be very interested in seeing what uh, open data sets there are available. If you mm -hmm. could share that slide oh, um, yeah. specifically. For, for a moment. Yeah, give me a second. So um, this one, sustain with Sustainalytics and CDP. Okay, can you make that uh, take up the whole screen so that we can oh. see it better? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it wasn't yeah. doing that. Okay. okay, there we go. So these these are all open data sources that, um, how, how, do, how do people go about accessing those or, or are um, they organizations that collect data? Um, actually, for Sustainalytics, it's a for profit organization. You would have to uh -huh. pay to have access to right. those services, but um, uh -huh. that is because they are doing research and computing um, ESG scores for those companies. So you'd be paying mm -hmm. for the service. So instead of like getting the data and doing the computation yourself and trying to see if a company is sustainable or not. Sustainalytics will do all of that for you. And CDP is very simple. I think you just need an account and you just, you can download the data sets uh, directly from there. Okay. So, and, and you mentioned um, the uh, hackathons 
uh, a little while ago. Uh, the yeah. source, could you just describe some of the hackathons? There, there are uh, groups yeah. in, in, in Singapore that also um, uh, run, run hackathons for using data for social good, but it would be good just mm -hmm. to understand that the process where, where you've gone uh, in uh, uh, hackathons in, in your area. Okay. Um, I think the, the one hackathon that uh, really marked me or had the biggest impact in my life was the Call Parathon, which is becoming more of a global initiative. It was um, it um, started in Montreal, and I think they have a hackathon in uh, Paris and in other cities as well. And it's a social innovation, um, it's an open innovation competition. And basically the goal is just to, the, a lot of different organizations can uh, give challenges that they're trying to solve. And people, participants can try to solve their challenge, the, the challenges using uh, tools that uh, they know of. So oftentimes it's gonna be just, um, they, they will use AI or other programs or whatever and just, solve those issues uh, themselves mm. and uh, it's just um, a way to um, celebrate uh, in innovation and as well as social impact they have a big emphasis on uh, how a solution can benefit the, the population and they have like um, I think specific um, specific prizes for those types of um, ideas mm -hmm. and and so the the process for, for people to get involved in those sorts of, of hackathons, they need some skill with with numbers or what sort of tool sets oh, do people no. uh, often use uh, in, in addressing those those challenges? Yeah, um, it's uh, not, you don't necessarily need to uh, be tech savvy in order to participate. They look for people of different backgrounds. You can have a mm -hmm. business background, a technical background, or even a, a background in um, in design thinking or purely design. So it's really encouraging collaboration between people of different backgrounds because that's how you, mm -hmm. be you get the best ideas. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, if you have a really great solution that is not very user friendly or whatever, it doesn't really, you can't really do much from it. So you really need to know exactly how to make a solution that is elegant, um, uh, in, in, enough, innovative, sorry, I'm forgetting, it's like um, mm -hmm. innovative, as mm -hmm. well as uh, profitable. So that's why you need people from a various um, academic mm -hmm. background or, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and we certainly have uh, in, in this region challenges with uh, sustainability of, um, of, of, of the environment, um, problems with, with food wastage, um, and, and also the, um, the, there, are, there are groups here, we, we have a couple of sessions later on today that are looking to use data uh, to uh, help track the make make a more sustainable supply chain and also uh, to track uh, the the disposal and recovery of plastic waste mm -hmm. so there there are lots of ways of of being of using uh, data to <clears throat> further those uh, those social uh, initiatives that um, it's really mm -hmm. really great to for you to share okay mm -hmm. well thank thanks very much Senabu. thank you so much for having me it was really, it was a pleasure.